But joining us right now, good man, re-elected, congrats for him, Republican Congressman of Michigan, Thaddeus McCotter, T-Mac. Hey, Dennis. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> Having a lot of the freshmen down to your pad for a little draw on the truth hookah this week? What's happening back no, there? No, I'm the kind of, I don't think they want them playing in my neighborhood. <laughs> Stay away from McCotter. <laughs> yeah, especially with a hook in the joint. That's the first No thing. pun intended. <laughs> Well, there's a the Wilmer Mills had the hookah. Of course, they all did. Um, let's uh, let's talk about uh, your reelection first. Congratulations. Uh, I, at the end, how did it play out? What were the numbers there, man? Oh, it was like 59. I got 59, and it was, uh, it was That's pretty good. much the wave across the country, at least in the Midwest. It didn't quite reach your beloved home, you know, California. No, no, it, it lapped up on the shore here and went back, you know. but. Uh, well, listen, T Mac. You know that uh, the Dems, I think, are on some sort of uh, a drip to keep them alive, but they're still on a drip. You realize that you guys are first queued up here. That if you don't pay off in the next two years, it is a nuclear winter for the GOP if they disappoint. Oh, absolutely, Dennis. Uh, this was not a vote for the Republican Party. It was a vote of the American people to try to restore check and balance within their servant government, and the Republicans are very well aware of that. And today, that's why we extended our moratorium on earmarks which is a continuation from what we did, and as the majority party, that will wind up in the House rules, mm -hmm. which I think is a positive development, because this was said by one of my colleagues, I think Mike McCall from Texas, if we can't do the obvious things that need to be done like this, how can you ever be hoped to yeah. accomplish greater things? Who got, Mitch's, uh, who got Mitch's attention at the other side of the underground tube there, where he got off? Uh, the... Well, I, I don't know what tube he was riding, but I think that over there, uh, Senator DeMint was very vocal on this. Mm -hmm. You have some freshman senators coming in uh, that are going to make their position on this clear. But there, the one thing that I did want to mention to you, you talked about you know, in the queue, is that I feel very sorry for Colin Quinn having to follow me. He should get top billing. <laughs> and I'm very upset at having to wait for some dude named Sir Dennis, uh, what, Eaton Crow or something? <laughs> You had on earlier. Who was that? Russell Crowe. Oh, Russell Crowe. I mean, dude, is, is, is this a toga thing with you? <laughs> <laughs> then you should get senators on if you want toga. Look at T-Mac. He was in that uh, conciliatory mode for a while when he was going up to the election to look humble. But he's back, slapping me around, ready to go, being all feisty. All feisty. Um, listen, uh, what? Uh, tell me how this plays out now as far as we've heard it. On the lead-up, everybody talks about, well, the House has the ability to defund Obamacare. It, lay that out for me in layman's terms that we can follow. Is that possible, or was that just campaign sort of frabba -jabba? Well, it's an act of negation, but it's, it's correct. Under the Constitution, the House, all spending bills originate in the House. All right, so say we do it. What happens then? Well, it's that we don't, it's if by doing, it's kind of like the way that the Democrats, or the progressive wing of the Democratic Party approached the Iraq war originally. They said defund it. So what happens with Obamacare is if the House doesn't act, uh, there'll be no appropriation for it. Or mm -hmm. in the appropriation bills, if there's no money for it, uh, you'll have, and you can put some guards in against the administration trying to shift money, there's no appropriation. So no money, no implementation. And the American public, at least the ones that voted in my district, don't want their tax dollars being used against them to implement a health care bill that didn't have their consent. Well, obviously, when you do it with defunding the troops in the arena of battle, it's a bit of a bluff. You're never going to do that, or you're marked by history for leaving the kids out there with no quan. Uh, this thing, you could get away with defunding. I think seven out of a ten of Americans think this is a goat up right now. So I think we, 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 we don't necessarily have to bluff here. They can take the next step. What would that be? You send it down to the Senate, and they have to decide whether to defund it, or where, where does it go from there? Well, they'd have to find a – they would then have to amend one of the – uh, spending bills to wind up trying to put that money back in. Mm -hmm. And they'd have to find re Republicans, I would argue, to support that. It'd be very difficult for them. Uh, they're going to have people like Manchin that are coming in that are that ran to the right of this administration, their own administration. But again, it's from the House point of view, Dennis, it's, it's much like, as a procedural matter, the way the progressives did it, is if you do nothing to fund it, then it can't be funded. We're talking to Thaddeus McCotter from Michigan. And I want to query him about Tammy Faye Boehner. He went a little wobbly on me that night. But what do you make of this cat? Well, I like the cat. You know, I've known him a long time. And I think that with Boehner, you're getting a guy from Ohio. And, you know, I'm a Midwesterner, Dennis. 99% uh, of us, except the people from Pittsburgh, are sane. And so what happens is you're going to get a guy who's pretty level-headed. He's going to wind up approaching this in a, in a very business-like fashion. I think that he's not 
going to wind up trying to play politics just for the sake of it because he understands that, as you rightly pointed out, uh, the Republican Party has still not been uh, redeemed in the eyes of the American electorate despite the wave. And so for him, it's going to be about results, and it's going to be about trying to do it in an adult fashion. Now, that doesn't always make for gripping theater, but it does sometimes make for good governance. Mm -hmm. Now, when uh, when he gave his uh, thing that night, I remember thinking Cantor just sat up in bed like a hyena on the Serengeti plane because he noted that limp. Tell me about Cantor and how long does he play along with the nice guy thing before he says, uh, we've got to rock the democratic world. Well, I think that... I don't confuse that uh, Eric's not exactly, he's like, he's like John. They're not exactly what you would call the, flaw, the bomb throwers, is that they, they tend to be more circumspect in how they approach these things. Mm -hmm. And so people have always asked the question, ever since uh, Boehner became minority leader and Cantor became the whip, there was always a speculation of how long until they're at each other's throats, and that has never happened. I served around the leadership table with them for the last four years and watched how, despite the outside uh, prognostications or provocations that they manage to work together. And I think that they're going to continue to do that, especially when the stakes are so high now for the country and for the Republican caucus. Well, I'm just saying I think the populace and the public and me, the electorate, is expecting one at least lay Miz gesture here. I don't quite know what it is, but we don't want it to be complete business as usual. We want some clarion call sound that, that if we continue to go down this road, it's a, this country ceases to exist in its current uh, configuration, my well, I think you're is. right, Dennis, and I, w I would agree that we're, we're at a crossroads. But as, as, a, as a matter, what's going to happen is Republicans are outnumbered by the President and the Senate, and we're going to do everything we can to get things done. And then you're also going to see, as is already starting, an incredibly wide-open presidential field out there mm -hmm. on the Republican side. And so a lot of attention is going to be paid there as to look for the clarion call and the precise from uh, way person. to proceed forward to keep America great will be coming from those candidates and how they articulate. Uh, we're going to be here doing everything we can to start that process. But in the end, we have to look at the way that the Constitution and the genius of the founders was to set up a government with checks and balances, and we are in a check and balance government right now. Do you think that the genius of the founders will be uh, emblematic in Pelosi's approach to this lame duck session, or is she just going to tour, tour, tour this under the carrier deck with things that uh, she needs to get through right now because they're never going to happen. Uh, well, she has a situation where the, the president, from what my understanding of the situation is, is the president, and I know that a majority of congressional members, a bipartisan majority of the House members, would vote to extend uh, the Bush tax relief across the board. Across the board? Really? I thought at I had heard. At least for a year. Because we've had Democrats that were running that signed letters to that effect. Mm-hmm. So when you add those up with the Republicans, you have enough to pass it. It has been Speaker Pelosi and Senator Reid that have not been in favor of that. And now we hear Senator Reid may be willing to do that. <laughs> so what we're watching is, in lame duck is people have talked about, well, how are the Republicans going to approach Senator Obama or Speaker Pelosi on this tax relief issue before the end of the year? And our answer is still the same. Uh, the genius of the founders means you get a two-year term. Speaker Pelosi remains Speaker Pelosi until the same day that the tax relief expires. So this is an internal Democratic debate that they're having as to what they're going to do. Did, did, do am I practicing wishful thinking here, or did I just say, hear you say Senator Obama? Did you well, say he's President Obama. I know he's president, but I thought I heard it's Senator. Senator Reid. Oh, okay. I'm very well aware that, that <laughs> Mr. Obama is president. Well, I haven't done my <laughs> studying today yet, so I'm not up on that. I thought I heard Senator Obama. You've been watching Togo movies with a hook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe Tynan. Go welcome those kids. Give them some rye out of the still down there. <laughs> Alan Alda. Thanks for that, <laughs> Thaddeus McCotter, good man. Congrats on your victory, T-Mac. Go get him.